As I just wanted to share where I'm at with this drawing, I've been drawing on and off all day today. Uh, took a couple breaks throughout the day, and uh, this drawing has been kicking my butt to say the least. And uh, it's a really tough statue. I, I think some of my initial measurements that I drew on the paper uh, when I was talking earlier this morning in our first live uh, cast, live stream, I should say, um, is uh, we're, we're off. And so what I've been doing, when, when you do that, then the rest of the day, the drawing is a little bit of a challenge. Um, so, yeah, it's on its own. I'm, I'm digging the way that it's coming out. Is it her 100 percent? Maybe not. Uh, am I trying to do that? Yes, I most certainly am. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, share where I'm at because I filmed a couple of uh, videos for the website uh, DTO for members um, where, I, where I talked about a little bit more of the mental game of drawing. And so I did a little bit of that with it. I drew also a little bit on um, Facebook with it, about 40 minutes there, uh, just trying out the live stream thing. And so this is where I'm at. And it's been a tough day uh, working on this one, no doubt about it, but it's also been fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on it uh, when I'm done with the live screen and uh, live stream. I, I So far, I've called live streams three things. Live cast, live screen, live stream. <laughs> it's been a long day. God. Okay. So uh, I was drawing this earlier, and that really does look like a leaf in her hair. Uh, a little bit of an underplane over here. This really starts to turn under. So I'm just trying to match some values here and shapes. This shape wraps around. It describes the form right here. And then it wraps around over here and then it gets very soft. Now, the top part of this shadow is soft, too. Very soft over here. Then it gets a little edge, and then it gets soft again. So there's a lot of soft. And then there's that second cast shadow. There's a lot of softness going on. Let's just refine. And it's very, so we have right here, we have, this is where the chipped stone starts on this statue. Okay, it's all chipped over here. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the chips on the live stream. I said it right. Uh, I might do that afterwards. If I even go that route, I, I might want to leave that part of this drawing left undone to give it more of an unfinished look. Uh, now, decision time. Do I want to kick out the head to the right a little bit? I might experiment and just see what that does. So once again, yeah, I might kick this out. A little bit goes a long way when you're working on a tiny drawing like this. This angles down. And I, I want there to be the light background against this part of the statue because this is the shadow side of the head and I, I don't want to go uh, too dark with it and I don't want to put much detail in there either. There's a triangular shape right over here at the jaw. Uh, let's go round with our pencil strokes. Yep. Um, yeah, this statue was hard. My God. I didn't think it was going to be that hard, but it was hard. Sometimes these things just kick your butt. And also, sometimes you have to hang in there and work it until it comes alive for you. And sometimes it doesn't come alive for you until the final pencil strokes. That happens to me a lot where I'll work on a drawing and... I struggle with it all day, and then the last couple of pencil strokes, I'm like, oh, there she is, and uh, I get it. Uh, I don't like when it happens that way, but it is a pleasant ending to the drawing. 
I'm just working the whole thing at once now. So we have these really dark indented chips, I'm going to call them, up top. Let me use a different eraser. Let's try this eraser. Actually, you know what eraser I've been using? And I just, I love it. And I got to get a new one. Um, it is this one, this pencil eraser with this brush. That brush I've been blending with that brush. It's awesome. Now, you guys have any questions? Um, I'll answer them for you while you're watching. Questions about um, the statue, my materials. Oh boy, yep, that's off. So this, this. I think I'm gonna pop this a little bit. I think this would be really fun. If I just do something different and pop a light where it's not supposed to pop on the shadow side. Just make the head a little bit more three-dimensional. Um, yeah, just uh, hopefully I can see your comments. I, I should technically have this on YouTube in case. Let me go to my YouTube channel. Just uh, pardon me for a moment here while I do that. And um, yep. Oh, okay, cool. Let me lower that. Well, my headphones are on. Okay, good. I don't see any comments over there, so uh, that means you guys are just chilling out. Maybe you're having a drink. Maybe you're having a coffee, and you're watching. It's a beautiful day here uh, on Eastern Long Island, so a lot of people are probably outside. So it's Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, right around dinner time for a lot of people. Let me shut that. Cool. A couple little more indents over here of chips in the marble. These little circles are kind of very cool. Um, right now, I'm using the Prismacolor Color Race pencil. Quite frankly, it's the only no, the only pencil that I ever use. I've been using it now for well over 10 years. And uh, I, I, I could preface all of that by saying um, a lot of artists uh, stay in experimentation mode for too long. So they go, you know, it's fun to experiment with different art supplies. You go to the art supply store and you buy these materials and you bring them home and you try them. My philosophy is, is um, you know, experiment, take your time to do that. But then once you find something that works for you, stick with that pencil or brand of paint or types of paintbrushes or drawn pad. Stick with it and really become one with your material. So this Colorace pencil, uh, I like it. So the one, the one way that I choose this pencil is... Uh, because I, I don't want to use multiple materials. I, I have a certain set of art materials that I use over and over again, and I don't really uh, experiment too much because I, I want to be in control of my materials. But the practical reason why I choose this pencil is because I just, I like how it drags on the paper. Uh, graphite to me is like walking on ice with shoes. Uh, this is like skating on ice and the blades grip into the ice. So I like this pencil tremendously because it drags on the paper for me. I could never get graphite to drag on the paper for me and this pencil does do that. So that's the reason why I chose it. And believe it or not, um, thank you Malcolm, uh, a student turned me on to this pencil and I remember the exact day, uh, the exact class and the exact, exact student and this was well over, God, this was a long, long time ago. This was like maybe 15 years ago. Um, Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T, in the animation department, he handed me a blue cola race pencil, and he's like, try this, you're going to love it. And I tried it, and that was, <laughs> he was right. So I learned a lot from my students, and uh, I really thank Garrett so very much 
for introducing me to this pencil. Now, before then, I only drew with a mechanical pencil many, many, many years. And I still keep one on my desk because I love it so very much and I use it when I write notes and stuff. Uh, but all of my drawings were done with a mechanical pencil, but I, I, I just don't know what happened, like I switched. Okay, we have dogs barking. Gosh, why are they going crazy? Okay. Um, so just, uh, let me just use my text here for a moment. Be right back. So, uh, yeah, let's let's keep going here. So, how long does a drawing like this usually take? So, it it, it depends how long I, I want to push it. So, I would say so far today, uh, three or four hours. Okay. Uh, so the first live stream was about a half uh, half an hour, forty minutes, and then it started cutting out uh, with the buffering. And then I paused that video and I started again. I think the next video was like an hour, and then. So I'm going to say four to five hours now that I'm thinking about it. Um, four to five hours is about the time that I, I'm spending on, on this drawing here today, uh, which is, is a good chunk of time. And I think some of my measure lines in the beginning were a little bit off uh, because I mentioned in a, a video that I did for the members of the website that sometimes uh, as an artist, you just are off that day and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. So you wake up and you, you draw, you sit down and you draw, you sit down and you paint, and nothing you do comes out right uh, in terms of, for me, it would be the measurements. So the measurements did not come out right for me with my initial lines. And so then the rest of the day just becomes like a little bit of a, a struggle uh, if you're trying to get proportions. If I'm not trying to get proportions, I, I really don't care. Uh, but for me, the, the proportions are something that I always try to do. So. I guess between four and five hours, quite frankly, because I've been working all day. We could probably be pushing like the five hour mark on, on this particular drawing, no doubt about it. Um, which for this amount of detail is, is not that bad. Oh yeah, my students talk about Kim Jung Ji all the time. I, so I do a lot of coaching, artist coaching with people and they sign up and I, they either sign up for like a one month coaching, a bi-weekly coaching with me, and I critique their work. And then I, uh, after the critique video, we talk on the phone and I also ask them who their role models are. And um, a lot of their role models are Kim Jong Ji. And uh, so, yeah, I know of him, no doubt, no doubt. Of, of course, he's pretty awesome, uh, definitely pretty awesome. So I just had a class uh, I was mentioning this morning on the live stream uh, where I was having problems with the buffering. Uh, I just had a class where on Zoom, the software Zoom with my students and I asked them to show me each individual student who their favorite artists were. And I, I learned um, a lot of really great artists that I, I, I kind of didn't know about in detail. And there's one artist that I heard about years ago, but I forgot all about and he's more of like a sci-fi guy um, more oh god I'm, I'm kind of losing track of names of things right now but his name is Simon Stalinhag Stalinhag S-T-A-L-E-N-H-A-G and um, his artwork I rediscovered it this week and man I love it it's really great it's this kind of sci-fi um, atmospheric landscape video game style artwork although his work goes in books I, I didn't read too much about his biography so excuse me if I'm getting some things wrong about him but yeah I mean there's so many great people out there it's really inspiring so I don't hate it uh, 
I'm just a little aggravated with myself that I was struggling with it. It should I shouldn't have been spending this much time on this drawing today. It should have been a drawing that was completed much faster. Just want to check my text off camera. Okay. So yeah, last week I made a huge mistake. I um, checked my text and it was right here where my hand is and everybody on YouTube saw it. It was no big deal. It was nothing bad. It was just um, my wife telling me dinner was ready. <laughs> but it was still like a little embarrassing. Okay, so let's chisel off a little bit there. Now I've got that angle all wrong. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, once in a lifetime talent. He's he's just great. You know, some people. You know, how do you define a master? Um, a master is somebody who has done the same thing over and over and over thousands of times in their life, and it could be simple. It it could be something very simple, like grip tape in a skateboard. And uh, for some people, putting grip tape on a skateboard could be like the worst experience ever. But you can get somebody who grip tapes a skateboard deck every day at their store or their shop where they work and they're a master at it. So uh, becoming a master is doing something over and over and over again. Yeah, so I teach in the animation department at the School of Visual Arts. Now I'm not an animator. I was an illustrator, a book cover illustrator for many years. Uh, so what I teach my students in the animation department is how to do landscapes because landscapes are in the backgrounds of their films. I teach them about digital painting a little bit in, via Zoom this semester. I teach them about color, composition, this type of drawing, although they don't really like this type of drawing. Some of them do. So I, I give them a really well-rounded education. Uh, but yeah, for me... Picking my style was easy when I was younger. Uh, it was all about becoming a book cover artist, and um, I needed to paint realistically. So all of my efforts went to that. It was pretty simple for me to figure all of that out and to build a portfolio. Um, so I, I wasn't confused. Like when I was younger and I graduated from college, there was no YouTube. So I, I wasn't confused when I log into YouTube and, and one day I see somebody doing you know, these environmental landscape designs and like, whoa, and then sci-fi and then, you know, Kim Jong-ji style art. And then another guy who's doing realistic paintings. Like, I think I'd be so confused if I was younger with the internet right now. Yeah, so this for me is kind of loose realism. Uh, so realism would be if I was doing this with uh, a gazillion hours, uh, which you know, I have my limits. I used to do more realism with paint, and um, I went down that road, and right now I just kind of want to do this for fun and to help people with their own drawings, teach people how to draw. Um, my days of doing realistic stuff under the pressure of a deadline are over. Um, I don't want to go back there. That was torture. Now that is too dark. So let me... So I got all little subtle things that I do. So this is an eraser that has just been laying around my studio for years. It is so old. Just kind of rub it off with my finger or rub it on the paper and drag. And it lightens something by a value, okay? Because that was just way too dark over there under the ear. Lose an edge on one side of your drawing. Don't outline your drawing equally all the way around. So over here, I could lose an edge down at the bottom of the statue, and that relaxes the drawing 100%. Uh, when you outline every aspect of your drawing, what happens is um, it becomes stiff. So lose edges. Uh, if you study a lot of old master paintings, you'll see that um, they lose a lot of edges on their on the shadow sides of where their um, painting edges are a little bit harder at the tip of the nose. Edges are a little bit harder, um, perhaps on 
part of the lips, on the eyelids, on the brow, dependent. I mean, this is a statue. It's, it's somewhat stylized at the brow bone because uh, that's a pretty sharp brow bone right there. Human beings' brows are a little bit softer. I did commission drawing, and the man scammed me. I lost so much motivation, but when I watch your stream, you really motivate me. So, Milos, there's this wonderful book, um, or Milos, a uh, wonderful book called The... Uh, only an artist would name the book this long. Uh, the Graphic Artist Guild Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. How's that for like a name? Um, and so in that handbook, they give you sample contracts that, that they encourage you to print out and use. And whenever you work for somebody, um, before you even touch the paper, uh, you should um, have a contract, definitely. Have I ever tried to animate? No, I have never tried to animate, although one of my all-time favorite things to do is to um, draw very short duration gestures like two-minute gestures, one-minute gestures, three-minute gesture drawings um, because that's what helps animators animate faster and that's what I love to do. If you visit my Instagram page, you'll see a lot of my short stuff over there. Um, I started watching Marco Bucci or Buki. Yeah, I never heard of that guy. Hey, Matt, I heard that colored pencils can fade over time. Does this apply to the color raised pencils? Um, uh, okay, so that's a really good question. So all artwork fades when you leave it in the sun, okay? Sunlight or any light is what causes something to fade. So if you're at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and you go to the... Uh, European paintings part of the museum, you'll go to the Degas room and you see the Degas pastels and you walk into that room and that room is like pitch black. It's, there's no sunlight going on in there because they don't want those pastel drawings to fade from light. So I wouldn't be surprised if the color race pencil will fade, but I quite frankly, like I don't leave any drawings out where direct sunlight can hit them. It's direct sunlight, that, and it's also the quality of the paper. So if you have done a drawing that you really, really love, uh, my Instagram is instagram.com uh, forward slash, slash Matthew Archambo artwork. If you go to my about page on my channel, uh, YouTube channel, there'll be a link to my Instagram there uh, if you don't want to spell my last name, and I don't blame you. But... Yeah, so don't let direct sunlight hit your pencil drawings because it will fade them. Like, for instance, uh, newsprint paper. I, I love drawing the gesture drawings on newsprint paper. And um, I have newsprint paper that I put in a frame because I like the drawing so much. And I kept the frame out in my room. It wasn't being hit by direct sunlight. And in a matter of six months, the paper was like pure yellow almost. So sunlight is what destroys things. Just lifting up the chin a little bit. Yeah, Instagram, I mean, I'm pretty new to Instagram, like a couple years. I've been there maybe a year and a half. I don't even remember. But it just kind of gives you a little bit more um, flavor of some of my short duration. Like I, what I really like to do the most is uh, work with a live model and do like 20-minute drawings and just... Do a 20, do another 20, then do another 20, and just keep starting over, and it's a great way to practice. A little longer with that neck. Let me resharpen this and get a little glass of water here. Okay, so how do I start a portrait drawing? I start a portrait drawing different every single time. Uh, sometimes I start a portrait drawing with a traditional technique called angles and measurements where you do this pretend thing that you pretend that there is an angle over here and you try to draw that angle. Then you pretend there's an angle over there like a ruler on the top of the head and you try to draw that angle and then you say, hey, what is right below the edge of her hair? So that's called angles and measurements. That's one way to draw a portrait. Uh, the other way is to start with the eye and draw that abstract shadow shape and then the abstract a light hitting the eyelid and you spiral out from the eye. That's another way. 
Another way is just to draw the shape of the hair versus the shape of the face. So there's so many different ways. Th those are the three big ways. This particular drawing, I tried to start with what is called continuous line. And so the first part of this live stream, and you can find that uh, video on my live stream playlist on my channel, uh, it was buffering and uh, it, yeah, it was so annoying. But to make a long story short, uh, this particular portrait drawing, I started this particular portrait drawing using continuous line. So continuous line meaning you draw with your pencil on the paper and you don't lift it off the paper. And as you draw, you don't lift off, but you periodically stop and you look at what you're drawing and you measure. But it's not an angles technique. So maybe I can, yeah, so I'm pushing and pulling my measurements. So what I need to do is uh, I'll draw for a little while longer here on YouTube and then I'll, I'll put it to bed. Uh, I want to thank you guys for, for watching this. But I just wanted to share a little bit more of this drawing because the first part of the live stream frustrated a lot of people with the buffering. And I promised that I would come back this afternoon. Let's just work. Her lips are so soft, it's like they're not even there. Um, a little sharper where they both touch. So it's a good technique to do soft first and then find one or two hard edges after. Uh, her lip is a cylinder, it needs to roll into the shadow. I think that uh, cast shadow over here is a little too dark. That could be balanced in, in another place. Oh, let's get rid of the light over here. And let's kind of come on down. So I don't want to do detail on this side. I want to keep it somewhat empty. If you put detail everywhere in your drawing, it's going to become flat. So the reason for doing that is simply to create three dimension. So if you look where you are right now, whether you're in your bedroom or your den or you're anywhere in your home, if you're watching this inside, um, there if you look in the shadows, shadows don't have a lot of hard edges. Like I'm looking in the shadows right now and things that are in the shadows have soft edges. So this is shadowy over here. I want to lose that edge, but I'm doing a little bit of a reverse gradation popping that. But the concept is less detail in the darks. Now, when you draw these cast shadows, make sure they wrap around form don't use straight lines. Straight lines are going to not be good. I'm going to leave the base of the statue unfinished. That's another thing that you can do to relax your drawings is leave part of them unfinished. So maybe I'll just do a side plane, very light side plane shadow. Okay, so when I start uh, drawing, when I start drawing a portrait, it doesn't fit on the paper at the end. So should I measure? So what you do is you do these things called um, landmarks. Some people call them like targets. So you see this, I don't think you can see it, it, it it's off the camera, but, um, and I don't want to muck with the camera right now because then I'll, yeah, I'll have to get up and do all that stuff. But uh, you say, okay, uh, here's the top of the head, here's the bottom of the statue, and I'm going to try to fit my drawing in, in between those two lines. Now, sometimes 
th this is why I'm really all for you know being consistent with your materials. When I draw with a model in the classroom, I use an 18 by 24 sheet of paper, uh, an 18 by 24 drawing pad. So I know that when I draw the model standing up, my drawing's going to be like 16 inches tall. So I usually start with the torso first and I uh, place the torso then I'm like okay I have a little room above the torso then that one inch and then I have my room to fit in the legs and the feet and then one inch at the bottom of the feet so if it's a stand-in pose I, I know where to put the torso so I can fit it in the same place on the paper every time and the same thing like with a drawing like this okay so this is 11 by 14 sheet of paper and this drawing is tiny so this drawing is she is three and a half wide by six tall okay so you just want to put some landmarks down they're called targets uh, so if let me do this for you okay so let's say I have a scrap piece of paper and I draw a figure so I, I draw a quick little torso I draw the head and I draw the um, pelvis I just say okay do I have enough room so I, I didn't have it on the paper so um, it, it, this is called a target and you very lightly sketch it out before you commit to doing something um, so this was a practice drawing that I did of this statue uh, this morning before I started filming just to loosen up and you can see these are my target lines and I'm trying to figure out uh, am I gonna have enough room to fit this statue on the paper and uh, so this would be a line and then I'd say, okay, let's do like an angle over here. And so that's my top. And let me do like a little mark over here. That's how you fit things in. Okay. And then also how you fit things in is working with the same materials over and over and over again, the same size paper. Like I like to work in standard sizes. So for me, 18 by 24 pad is a standard size. So I, I get the same results. Consistent results is, is really uh, a very important thing for artists because it builds a lot of momentum. Yeah, um, you know, another trick that you could do is you could put your photo reference right next to your drawing the way that I have it displayed on the YouTube screen. Um, and you could do the just say okay what's right across from the head now I wasn't trying to do that at all and now that I'm looking at it because what what I have on my right, right in front of me I'm drawing at a 45 degree angle right in front of me is my reference on my iMac and um, it's big it's really big it's double the size of this so I wasn't trying to do the site size method at all because my photo reference isn't next to me I'm just kind of drawing it smaller than the photo reference uh, so yeah it's um, it's repetition is the mother of skill you just have to kind of keep doing this and um, and just always have wherever you're going to school if you're going to school in high school or college um, or if you're have a mentor somewhere online uh, just try to get their feedback um, and the key is a little bit of feedback goes a long way and draw every day yeah they are boundary lines that's a good name for that I didn't think of that name that's a good one okay so just assessing the drawing I, I don't like how that comes up and connects with her head so I could maybe consider lightening that or I could drop my tone. I'd rather, I shouldn't be working on this right now, but I, I just don't like that. And I could just, while you guys are watching me here, just do a little bit with the brush. So you can see that I have hard edges and I have soft edges. You want to have both and you want to do both with reason. You got it. So I'm just looking. I think this 
could be softer. I know that noise is annoys people, but it's a fun brush noise. Just trying to soften the edge there. Just looking. Look 50% of the time, draw 50% of the time. Uh, that is too light up top. Just knocking down a value. The brush uh, gets rid of white paper quite nicely. Let's get rid of white paper over here. Top part of the chipped part of the marble is where the white paper is more so. Her cheeks are where the white paper should be. So a lot of subtleties. So now it's just a question of um, are you building a body of work or is this just um, a drawing for practice? Those are the two things for you to take into consideration. And that will help you to figure out how much you want to push this thing. So this is too light. I see. So when I first was asked to teach at the college, the School of Visual Arts, um, my natural department would be the illustration department because I was an illustrator um, painting book covers. Okay, So I taught in the illustration department for many, many years. And then my wonderful friend Tom Woodruff in the illustration department thought I was too vanilla and he uh, told me he didn't want me to work there anymore. So to make a long story short, um, I was rehired to teach in the animation department and uh, life goes on. So uh, I love the animation students. They are great. Um, I'm kind of giving you my own interpretation of what I thought Tom Woodruff thought about me. Uh, and it's all good. You know, I'm pretty confident in my shoes, so it's fine. Uh, so and I love the animation department. I it taught me a lot teaching in the animation department because all of my drawings used to look like this uh, tone. And when you teach in the animation department, you need to draw with line, right? And so um, I was forced to teach myself uh, how to do quick gesture drawing. I also forced myself to learn how to draw out of my imagination. And I started teaching in the animation department in my 30s. Uh, so I learned that stuff late in life because this is all that I ever did, like these tonal drawings for many, many years because I would draw like a painter. And so I, uh, teaching in the animation department was um, the best thing that ever happened to me because it made me learn new things and it made my, my tonal drawings became much better because of my line drawings. And my line drawings became so much better uh, because of I, my understanding of tone. So you need to do both. And again, if, if you look at some of my drawings on my Instagram page, you'll see that I have a lot of line drawings of the model and um, not so many tone drawings. I have more line drawings of the model because uh, I spend so much time drawing the model uh, from life that that's usually what I post on, on Instagram. So I, I love teaching in the um, animation department. It's great. Silver lining technique. Um, I never tried it. Uh, I think. Yeah, no, I never tried that. I, I want to try it. It's just at, at, at my stage in the game, at my age, I'm, I'm not saying I'm never going to try new techniques. I think that would be a stupid statement. But um, I'm pretty set in my ways in terms of um, the materials that, that I use. And, you know, usually people who are very successful in the arts, I'm not saying everyone now, and please, this is just my opinion. Uh, when you study some of the most successful people in the arts, um, they use the same materials over and over and over again because they master that skill set of pen and ink drawing or painting and procreate or using a pencil or colored pencils or maybe they like watercolor 
And once they decide on a medium, they stick with it. So um, silver point is something that I, I'm curious about. And I, quite frankly, I, I think I might try it one day. It seems pretty fun. I just, you know, uh, one of my coaching students actually showed me this website. Uh, I forgot the name of it, where he's buying all these like really expensive painting materials. And they had silver point materials on there. So, yeah, maybe I'll ask him the name of that site one day. I'll try that. Don't like the texture over here in the background. It's just god awful because it's the same texture as the statue, and I don't like that. Yeah, it's, it's because these are some mistake lines. So let me see if I can't erase that out and then reapply. So you don't want to be afraid of messing up. I mean, um, you just this is you need to know your materials. Okay, so now I could take my blend and stump, which I'm not really a big fan of using. I only use it in certain occasions and push into the paper. Still have that little texture, so I'm just gonna have to live with it. Now I can feather in. So I think we're coming down to the end of this drawing here today. It was a lot of fun. Um, okay, I don't really have too much of that on my YouTube page. What I have is um, on my, and I, please understand, uh, John Way Lee, I'm not trying to be a salesman. I'm just stating a fact. On my website, I have a course that uh, teaches about how to draw features. Not so much about expressions, more about how to draw features. For me, um, ex everything is the same thing. It's just all about form, and an expression would be form in a, in a weird position instead of like normal form. How low can the jaw go? Okay, so you can exaggerate that. So for, for me, with the eyes, expressions are just always going to be about eyebrows. So I know that's really tiny on your monitor. I'm sorry. So worried, pissed off, okay, um, excited, or kind of happy, uh, no emotion whatsoever. <laughs> So eyebrows really are really important for expressions. I use eyebrows a lot. For me, my, my type of work is, uh, it, it's, it's even hard with a model. Like sometimes we'll get a model in the classroom and, and they do expressions, but they can only do the expressions for a very short period of time. Um, my artworks, I would call my artwork like quiet. It's not loud and expressions are loud and energetic and fun. Um, so yeah, if that's, I, I would just take pictures of people doing crazy expressions and try to draw from the pictures because expressions, like holding expressions is, is very, very difficult. Okay, so I'm just gonna brush this thing off and I think we're gonna put this to bed. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about me and what I offer for you guys, just go to the about page of my channel. Um, yeah, uh, just go to the about page of my channel and that will tell you a little bit about me. You can also go uh, just, I know my name is pretty difficult to spell. Uh, it's MatthewRshambo.com. You can check out my website and I'll, I have some drawings there. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this my whole life and I have thousands of drawings, uh, hundreds and hundreds of paintings, oil paintings. Uh, so what you see online is just like a little small snippet, snippet of what I've done over the years. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, leave a comment below uh, or leave a thumbs up. That'd be really helpful. And if you want to know more about when I do these live streams, definitely subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications bar because uh, I'm trying to do a live stream every single Saturday multiple times a day. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, 
I really appreciate it. If you have any further questions, visit me on the next live stream. That would be really fun, okay? Have a good night.